Clarita here, and I've got a new sponsor, DistroKid. If you want to release your music into the world, DistroKid's the easiest way to get your music into all the major streaming platforms, unlimited uploads, and keep 100% of your royalties. And because you're a Design Freaks listener, you get 30% off. Go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Design Freaks. DistroKid. Welcome. Hi, it's the Design Freaks Podcast. My name's Clarita. I'm the host. I'm a graphic designer. I like to talk about album cover design, stories behind the record sleeves. Uh, this is episode 78, the Ege Bamiyasi episode. It's a mini episode. These are called Design Freaks Covers a Cover, where I pick one album cover and I try to find out as much about uh, the artwork as possible. What went on behind the scenes, who was the art director and or designer as much as I can. Then I make a little video and I give it to you for free. Aw, this time I'm covering Ege Bamiyasi by the beloved Krautrock band. Founded in 1968, Can. Um, we just lost another member of Can, the amazing Damo Suzuki, who is 74 years old. And uh, born in Japan, he was one of their vocalists and was really unique and just an artist through and through and worked pretty close to the end of his life. So just inspiring and such a cool, unique voice, amazing uh, legacy. Check out this beautiful, amazing documentary called Energy, a documentary about Damo Suzuki. Um, it's directed by Michelle Highway. And I had been following her efforts um, the past few years on Instagram to get this documentary made, completely forgot about it. And then after he passed, of course, had to go and rent it. It's like $8 to rent. It's awesome to hear him speak in his own words and describe his own situation and his own experiences. You see some of what he went through with cancer. Um, you get to see his weird art which I wasn't familiar with. Fascinating. And of course, all the footage as well. So um, there's links in the show notes. There's a trailer you can watch. There's um, You can rent it on Vimeo like I did. If you want to own it, I know there was a limited run of DVDs. I'm not sure if those are still available, but there's links galore. So check that out and um, show support for that film. It's incredible and so appreciated. Thank you to Michelle and thank you, Damo. Yeah, that's why I picked this cover. Also, it's such a ubiquitous cover. Even if you don't know the band can, I feel like people have seen this and it's like, what's the deal with the okra? So I'm going to talk about that. But first, if you enjoy the show, please share with other vinyl and design freaks. Uh, leave a five-star iTunes review like, review, subscribe, and all that. I am on YouTube, so you can watch the show. I try to put up as many graphics as I can, as possible. Um, but if you like to do audio only, I do have an Instagram where I post the artwork as well. I'm at underscore Design Freaks Podcast, and the website is designfreakspodcast.com. As usual, for more music-related podcasts, check out Ruinous Media. Dot com. Uh, I want to do, before I get into Ege Bamyasi, I wanted to do a little thank you corner, a little thank you segment. I guess that's the right word. I don't really do segments, but a couple of labels have sent me some really cool things and I so appreciate it. First of all, I want to say thank you to Secret Records. They're at secretrecordsmusic.com and I'll have links in the show notes. But um, they are a small label in Madison, Wisconsin, run by Vincent Presley of Zebras and Those Poor Bastards. And these are limited edition vinyl and cassettes. They do like reissues of Ralph Records. Some of these are like my favorite bands of all time and these beautiful um, colored vinyl. I love Snake Finger. I got like a chrome flexi disc, X-Girl. 
I love the cover. And then pink splatter. Thank you, Secret Records. I also want to say thank you to Extinction Burst. This is a heavier label. Some really cool design. Extinction Burst is a label out of Victorville, California. They also have a link tree, blah, blah, blah. They sent me a bunch of stuff. Thank you so much. I'm still working my way through it. And then I've been listening to this band all day today, Holy Caravan. I love the, the packaging for this, their logo. Thank you, friends. So let's talk about... Okay. Um, I, for this episode, I referenced this book for the can segments of it. It's called Kraut Rock, Cosmic Rock and Its Legacy. Great book. Highly recommend. Lots of great photography and stories. This record came out in 1972. I will talk about the name, the meaning of it, and why they chose it, or the two different stories of why they chose it. Um, but first, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the basics. Who's So who is Can? So Can uh, was a German experimental rock band, reading straight from Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia is good for some things. So they came out of Cologne, Germany in 1968, and they were known as experimental rock because kraut rock hadn't really been like named that yet. They were formed in Cologne by Holger Chukai, which I've been pronouncing wrong this entire time. And then Erman Schmidt, Michael Caroli, Jackie Liebesit. Uh, the group featured several vocalists, including American. Uh, when I read that, I was like, what? Um, that was a surprise. He was technically born in New York, but he was German. He lived in Germany. So kind of American Malcolm Mooney and then um, Japanese Damo Suzuki from 1970 to 1973. They've been hailed as the pioneers of kraut rock. So what's kraut rock? <laughs> it's not a slur. It's an actual music genre. Um, it emerged in the late 1960s, mainly represented by groups from West Germany, although later um, other groups kind of fit into that category too. Like I would say Silver Apples were like New York kraut rock. They were like uh, related to experimental underground, psychedelic, uh, prog rocky kind of, uh, sort of loosely adjacent to prog rock, um, electronic. It goes on and on. There were a lot of influences and it was reacting to a lot of things. Uh, there was definitely psychedelia and psychedelic drugs. Why was it named Ege Bamiyasi and what the heck does that mean? So the cover artwork, uh, and I'm going to have all my sources in the show notes as I do. Um, it's hard not to jump around with the stories behind this cover. I'm just going to do the best I can. So the album cover shows a photograph of a can of Ege Bamiyasi, which is Turkish for Asian okra as in the Aegean Sea, Aegean Islands. Um, in the August 2006 uncut, now this blurb I'm reading, it's a quote of a band member. Um, in a 2006 uncut interview with Stubbs, Schmidt explained, the can on the cover is not a silly concept idea. It was a can that Jackie had found in a Turkish shop. There, the word can means something like life. There's no concept behind titles like vitamin C and I'm so green, but certainly we were very organic in our sound by now. I don't know if he's trying to make a joke, like or get, or, okra, organic, I don't know. But yes, in Turkish, the word can equals life. So that was like the name of the brand. Um, and then Ege Bamyasi, Asian okra. And then the uh, German translation right underneath, it's okra shorten. <laughs> so cute. And that literally translates to okra pods. So that's the story from Wikipedia that they found the physical can, which is what I always assumed, that they either found a can of okra and somehow, you know, put their name, had graphics done to put their name on the can, or they just found the can as is. 
um, and then photographed it and created a cover this way. So there is a conflicting story in that book, Kraut Rock, Cosmic Rock, and its legacy, that they had seen the name scrawled on a menu. Um, I'll get into that more in a little bit. I want to read the the credits here. The artwork and design for the original cover, I'm not going to talk about the, I believe it was a 2004 reissue, but the original design, Ingo Trauer and Richard J. Rudow. Ingo Trauer is a German designer and art director and printer. Um, he has 10 visual album credits on Discogs, and that's what I use for the show. I know um, sometimes not everything is included there, but it's usually a good source. There's 10 records, two can records, Ege Bamyasi and Future Days, and then Pulpul, two Popolva albums, Amon Duel 2, Wolf City, and a few other things. And of those 10, um, Richard J. Rudow was credited also with six of those. So it looks to me like they work together. Oh, also for the can box set. Um, looks like they work together. And I'm assuming that Ingo then is the art director. Richard is the designer. That's usually how that relationship works. Um, I found a couple of articles on wessercourier.de, which is the german.com. And I'm going to pronounce it Wesser. I try, I looked up the pronunciation and each one was different. Some of them were like Visor and some were Weezer. I don't know. Um, Wesser is also the name of a river that kind of goes through Bremen, the city uh, where Ingo lives. This article said that this trained printer has lived in Bremen since 1959. He's the inventor of the legendary Beat Club logo. I'll talk a little bit more about B Club in a second. Um, and he also created the music store sign. I don't know what that means, and I refuse to look it up. Um, as an art director at United Artists, he designed various album covers for various kraut rock bands, such as Can, Amon Duel, and Pulpova, and then worked for the music label RCA in Hamburg. Um, until 2006, he ran a printing company and a publishing house on Friesenstrasse, and for many years, he was also chairman of the Bremen Cycling Association. So it took me a while to figure it out, but Ingo Trauer did pass away in November of 2022. There's a couple of reasons why it was hard for me to figure it out. First of all, the obituary notices are all in German, and for some reason, these are not live text. So it these are images. They're like these these digital cards that are created. And so because there are images, Google cannot scan the text and translate them to, into English. So but obviously upon further notice I did realize oh these have a birth and a death date on them. So Ingo was born in 1940 and did pass away November of 2022. So fairly recently uh, rest in peace, Ingo Trauer. Um, and there's a, a place on the West Wesser Courier website where you can go light a virtual candle for Ingo. I went there and did that. And you can read the other dedications there as well. The, another reason it was a little confusing is that his name, Trauer, literally translates to the word mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G in English. Um, so I was used to reading these articles where he was being referred to as Ingo Mourning. And then also in some contexts, it was translated to the word grief. Um, so kind of a weird coincidence there. Um, so anyway, that made it also a little bit confusing. But yeah, the articles that I'm referencing were written by the Wesser Courier before he passed. So they're referencing him in present tense. But yeah, he is no longer alive, it seems, um, but he lived a very long life. Can you imagine 1940 to 2022? What a ride. Seems very cool. He keeps everything he's made and worked on. Um, kind of sounds like he's a little bit of a pack rat, which is awesome because I love when people keep ephemera and, and things like that. It's really cool. So let me go back through that, what I just read and kind of explain. So the Beat Club, 
um, was kind of like the old gray whistle test. It was a German show and all, every band that was cool, uh, performed on this show. It was also, um, if, if you've noticed, um, the tributes to Damo Suzuki that have been going around social media, a lot of people have been posting their performance from the beat club. Um, it's very memorable. And <laughs> I think they do, um, Paper House in 1971. So this was before Ege Bamyasi came out. This was um, from the Tago Mago era. And if you look at the list of bands that performed on Beat Club, it's insane. It's like everyone. Um, Alice Cooper, Amon Dole. I'm just going down alphabetically. Um, you know, everyone. Beach Boys, Bee Gees, Black Sabbath, Blue Cheer, Can, Captain Beefheart, Chicago, Chuck Berry, David Bowie. Deep Purple, The Doors, The Equals. I mean, yeah, I'll have a, a link to that as well in the old show notes. So he developed that logo and it looks like it was um, kind of a play on the underground sign for the subway or whatever they call it in Germany. Um, then this other article on him was all about when he took a trip to Woodstock when he went to the United States in 1969 and hitchhiked, um, had a grand old time and he kept his headband that he got there. They had like Woodstock merch, but uh, yeah, it says Woodstock with love. It's a teal headband and in uh, orange letters, it says Woodstock with love in this really cute font. So thank you, Ingo, for keeping everything. I'm sure your house is very cluttered, but I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that was about 50 years ago. Um, he also, um, when people say he likes to keep things, he says he preserves it. He makes that distinction. The writer for this article says his house in the eastern suburbs is like a cabinet of curiosities. In almost all rooms, the bulging shelves rise to the ceiling, stacked with books, magazines, records, and other relics that Trower has collected, pardon, preserved over the course of his life. On every free wall, there are pictures or metal signs that remind us of long forgotten times. Visitors are quickly tempted to lose themselves in the treasures to be discovered here. Visitors, I want to go. Uh, for Ingo Trower, this is everyday life. And he says, quote, my whole life is a series of beautiful experiences. He preserves it like the treasures in his apartment. Woodstock will always be a part of it. That's so sweet. So yeah, that's our art director. And uh, also art directed and designed other beautiful things. I promised I would tell you the other story about naming this record Age Bamyasi. So this is from the, the Krautrock book. Um, and it's uh, a blurb that was by Ann Shenton of Add N to X, very awesome band. Anyway, she admires him, of course, and, and said this, the fact that Damo Suzuki was allegedly picked up by the band while busking has always attracted me to the ethics of Can. Very cool. A street performer became the band's front man. This says to me that there were not the normal egos in tow and that can approach the band set up differently in a more fluid and inventive way. This attitude was something that me and my band were attempting when we first began performing in the early 1990s. I'm assuming she means add in tax. When I recently played as a sound carrier for Suzuki in his never ending tour, I dusted down my old Moog Rogue and headed off to meet Suzuki and the rest of the temporary band. I was interested interested in I was interested in his method of orchestration or non-method as the case may be uh, during our sound check a young enthusiast wanted to write up a set list and plan the performance in greater depth but Suzuki was totally against that uh, we had to communicate in real time as we were playing with no pre-planning that's probably terrifying for musicians right in his experience, the pre-planned stuff never works as well as the impromptu playing. And anyway, our time could be better spent nipping to the Japanese cafe and sampling the sake. Just promise me no rules, okay? During the performance, a, a simple nod, a flick of his mane or a drum roll would sig signify a change of pace. Uh, we would react on the fly like starlings in the evening sky. Changing directions in a cinch. 
Then he was off to the next gig in Paris. He's a real modern day nomad singing for his supper. Mm. Okay, so this is the part uh, where it gets a little bit confusing to me because I thought it was based on this Turkish can of okra. But here we go. The words Ege Bamyasi, so Suzuki told me, was something can saw scrawled on the menu in a Turkish cafe. It made no sense to them at the time, and it doesn't mean anything to me either, but it sounds good. A great ready-made album title in true Dada style. Um... And then she goes on to say that it kind of, uh, it's fitting for his singing in different languages, Japanese, German, or English. Words don't always mean anything or make sense, um, which is part of his legacy. Uh, There was a little bit of Cocteau twinsing going on. I think if that's true, if he really said that, it could have been that they they did both. They saw it on a menu. They saw it on a can. They kept seeing it, maybe. I don't know. If you know more, please chime in. <laughs> yeah. So I just thought I would include both of those stories. Either way, it's a very cool cover. It's so striking. It's so memorable. I think food on record covers is always a great idea. You know, it's uh, there's also other packaging I'll put up on the screen and, and we'll be posting. Um, one of the greatest... Kraut rock bands, possibly, if you're not familiar, you got a lot of listening to do. And uh, then there's like the Sacrilege covers album. There's, you know, that box set. There's the Lost Tapes, which that's an excellent. I don't know if that would be a good intro, but it's definitely a very cool extension of, of their catalog. So anyway... Thank you for joining me, uh, coming on this very short mini episode journey um, of celebrating Damo and this very mysterious and cool album cover. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.